Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and once again, we are cooperating with Chords. We are talking about the suffix and fretboard library today. Now, in Finale, you may be aware that certain tools have library items, like the expression tool, the articulation tool. You know, each articulation is an item within the library. It sort of works the same way with chords, except with the chords, it's really only the suffixes and the fretboards that are a library item together. And then there's also a, a, a fretboard style library that's sort of separate. So those three items are really the only things that are library items. The chord roots and the uh, alternate bass notes, that's really data. So, you know, whenever you copy over the, the D major chord, doesn't matter what file you copied into, it's like copying over notes. Data is data. And as we know, we can check out these uh, suffix library. If we go into the chord definition and choose suffix select, we can see the whole chord suffix selection dialog box. So every single one of these suffixes within this box is part of the library. Uh, in addition to that, the fretboard section here, if you press select, now most suffixes and the major and minor chords uh, will have its own set of fretboard groups. These fretboards are also considered part of the library. If you sort of think about it one way, um, the suffixes are sort of the bookshelves in the library and the fretboards are the books that go on those bookshelves since the fretboards are actually tied directly to the suffixes. And then the fretboard styles is sort of its own library that we can access as well. So whatever changes you make to these styles or additions, um, we can uh, copy and paste those or load those libraries as well. So with these suffixes and fretboard library items, it does get a little bit confusing as to what happens when you copy and paste music between files. So I've set up two files here. I have a source file here and I have a target file here, which is empty. Now, both of these files were originally generated from the default document using the Maestro uh, font set and the Times New Roman um, chord suffix font set. And uh, so the chord suffix libraries are essentially the same except for a couple changes that I made, which I'll show you as we're going. So the way this works is that if the suffixes are exactly the same between files, I mean, and when I say exactly the same, I mean it uses the same font, the same size, and it has the same exact position and everything, then the suffix item will not get added to the library. The suffix will get added to the score, essentially, in the place where it's supposed to, but it will not get added to the library. So in this case, I'm going to copy this first measure with the D and the G7 here. And you'll see that the G7 will appear there just as normal. And when we look at the suffix uh, library item here, we'll notice that it's still using the 25th library item. It's not actually adding a suffix to the bottom of the list, right? That's because those suffixes exist exactly the same way. Now, if I have a unique suffix, now in this case, in this source file, I created an alternate seventh suffix, and you see that the seven is just sitting a little bit higher than the uh, normal seven, right? So when I copy and paste this over, um, not only is it going to place it in the score, but now because that suffix is sort of a unique suffix item, um, it gets added to the bottom of the chord suffix selection dialog box. All right, so that's just how that works. It's a little bit more unique with uh, fretboards, and this is where it gets slightly confusing. Now in this source file, I've created a f an extra fretboard group in the major chords fretboard group. You can see there's actually a fifth fretboard where normally there's usually only four. And actually in the target file, there's, uh, there's only four as well. Um, however, in the score, I'm not using it right here. It doesn't matter with this particular uh, fretboard group for the major and minor um, fretboard group. When I copy and paste this bar over, again, it will use that fretboard, which is actually fretboard ID 1. However, the extra fretboard group, the fifth fretboard group, gets added there as well. Again, it doesn't matter whether or not I've used that fretboard group in that particular measure. As you can see in this measure, I did use that fifth fretboard group for the D major chord. So when we do that here, it will copy and paste the, uh, the new fretboard group uh, in its place, right? So now this uh, fretboard group ID should be number five. In addition, the fifth fretboard group gets added. So uh, that's a little bit of an oddity about that major, uh, major chord fretboard group. And it also works the same way with a, with a minor chord fretboard group. With uh, chords that have suffixes, it's a little bit different. And this is uh, sort of unique and sort of weird in my opinion. So 
with this G7 chord here, I did indeed create a second fretboard group, and you'll see that uh, it's, it's setting right there. However, it does not work the same, and in fact, I believe this chord uses a second fretboard group, right? Um, when I copy and paste both of these measures over, copy, paste, um, what happens is the, the first seventh is fine, but you'll see the second seventh has a blank fretboard group. And the reason for that is that it's copying over as fretboard ID number two. However, it never copied over that second fretboard group in the library, which is a little bit of a mystery to me. I feel like it probably should, uh, but it doesn't. So that's why you would end up with an empty fretboard group like that. However, that only applies when the suffix is exactly the same. So in this case, the seventh suffix is suffix number 25. And th which means that when I copy and paste it, it doesn't add that suffix to the uh, suffix um, uh, selection dialog box. However, this suffix, again with the crazy little extra seven there, is unique. So now when I copy this over, um, I will get that extra suffix and I'll also get the extra fretboard group that I added to that suffix, right? So this A7, by the way, what I did was I just copied the original fretboard group from the seventh suffix and added that second one as well. And you see now, for whatever reason, because this suffix is unique, it is copying over all of the fretboard groups as well. So there's a little bit of an oddity, a little bit of strange behavior going on with that, but that's exactly what's happening. Now, if you copy over, copy, and paste over a bunch of music. Like, let's say I'm going to do all of this at once here and paste it here. Um, in this case, you will get a couple extra suffixes added. Again, this A7, this extra seventh suffix, and this, one, this other one down here, which is completely unique. Now, there may be instances where you get something like this where you don't want this seventh to be looking different than the rest of your score. So what you can do is go into this chord suffix selection dialog box and you'll see that suffix highlighted here. And all we really need to do is just press delete. And we'll get this option to, the second option here says delete element from both selection palette and score. Or the first option will let us delete it and then replace it with something else. So if we use that first option and press select, we'll get another chord suffix se selection dialog box. And from here we can choose the original seventh suffix, which is number 25, and press select. And now it's going to replace this one with number 25. And you'll see that it goes away. And then actually we can just cancel out of here. And we'll see that that, uh, that seven goes back to normal. Of course, you know, with the issue that it's now looking for the second fretboard ID group, which doesn't exist. So we would have to go back and select the first one to make sure that uh, we get that uh, fretboard to show. Um, we can do the same thing with a flat nine sharp five if we want to, but I'll, I'll skip that for now. So we don't uh, totally waste a lot of time. But uh, let's go back and start over here. So we can also copy and paste over fretboard styles. And on the second line here, what I have is a, a, uh, a, a couple chords here that use a completely unique fretboard style that I created called Jazz 3. Uh, these other two are, uh, oops, part of the, I think they're using Jazz 2. Let's see, is that right? Yep. Um, so what I can do is copy this bar over and what I should get is a copy of those chords with the fretboard diagrams, but also you'll see that the third and fourth chord here are also using that new Jazz 3 uh, fretboard style. So that will also copy over as well. All right, just go back here. Now the other thing we can do besides copying and pasting is loading and saving libraries, or actually saving and loading libraries. So in the source file, you want to go to uh, File, and you can save the library. And with this library, you have a, a bunch of different options, as we know, and there's a bunch of different things we can save. Now, with chords and fretboards, if I choose chords and fretboards, it actually should say suffixes and frets, fretboards. This is kind of wrong. Um, we can check that, but there's also another option here for fretboard styles. So we can actually export uh, you know, either the suffixes and the fretboards together or the fretboard styles uh, individually or separately or together. So let's just say we're going to check both of these options and we're going to create a library with all three items. And we can name this, I'm going to call this my chord library. And uh, it should get saved not in the libraries. Let's put it on my desktop so I can find it real quick. Save. 
and it will create a library item, which I'm dragging over from my desktop, which you can see there, called My Chord Library. And uh, what we can do with that is go into the target file here, choose File, choose Load Library, and now we can uh, find my desktop and find, uh, where is it, My Chord Library, and open that up. And now Finale has just loaded the library in the target file. Now what's interesting is that uh, this will indeed load um, all the suffixes. Um, there's a couple extra suffixes that were in that library. If you'll remember, the 7 flat 9 sharp 5 and the new 7th as well, right? Uh, also, it will, because I had that option checked, it will load the uh, Jazz 3 uh, fretboard style. And interestingly, it will actually load uh, a duplicate copies of the other ones. So that's just something that you'll sort of have to deal with as well. But that new Jazz 3 fretboard style is there as well. And what's even more interesting is that I believe, let me just double check this, we go to uh, suffix 25 with the 7th, right? And I believe, yep, it will actually... In this instance, it will actually load that fretboard, that extra fretboard group to this duplicate suffix, essentially. Essentially, what's happening is it's doing the same thing. Again, it's not loading library items that already exist. Uh, so I'm not getting, an, uh, you know, 179 new suffixes. It's sort of ignoring all the ones that, do that already exist in this file. So, um, and for some reason, it will do this correctly with the seventh fretboard situation here. So that's uh, kind of an advantage of doing it this way. So what I'd like to do here is I'm going to open this third file and talk a little bit more specifically about some of the chord libraries that are available in Finale right out of the box because you may not be aware of this but uh, we can load a whole bunch of different libraries into whatever file we want and uh, if we go down here and choose load library and instead of going to uh, my desktop, I'll go to where it wants to take me, which is through the library application, blah, 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 Finale 26 libraries. And uh, on the right column here, you'll see where all these libraries are. And there's a whole section for chord suffixes. And let me just see if I can extend this a little bit so that we can see a little bit better. It's a very long window. Um, so you sort of see what's available. There's chord suffixes in Arial text, Broadway copies, Finale copies, Jazz, Jazz chord, Times. Uh, expanded suffixes libraries, figured base, fretboard styles. There's a whole bunch of different um, uh, types of things that we can load here. And I don't necessarily want to go through all of these because that would take a lot of time. So uh, just suffice it to say, you can sort of play around with these, load these libraries, and um, you know, just to show you kind of what happens when you do this, like let's say we're going to load the uh, Arial chord suffix library here. Now, because I'm loading this into a pre-existing file that already has a chord suffix library, uh, the Times New Roman, in fact, um, what will end up happening is that, you know, you'll have all of your Times New Roman uh, suffixes here, but then as you scroll to the bottom, it will add all of, there they are, all of the Arial uh, chord suffixes as well. So now you actually have both to choose from. Um, so if you're going to do it this way, you know, I if you're starting from scratch, maybe the thing to do is to load the library and then select all of them uh, all at once, just shift select and delete. Um, but if you have music in your file, that's going to be a problem because it's going to delete all the suffixes that exist. So you might have to go through that process of replacing and everything. So um, that's also uh, something you may have to deal with. Let me just show you a couple other things here. Load library. Let's go back to there. There's a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, the Arial and the Times New Roman libraries will use the Maestro font for the flat and the sharp. The Broadway copyist, the Finale copyist, and the Jazz fonts have the sharp and the flat symbols directly in that font. So there's no, no need to switch between the music font and the text font uh, for those characters. The Jazz chord font, let me just see if I can find that real quick. Uh, where is that? Ah, there it is, Jazz Chord. The uh, Jazz Chord library, I'm loading that right now, is unique because the library items, the suffixes here, um, are actually set as one character. So there's that, if you go and look at the, you know, edit this, um, <laughs> what you're seeing is one character typed, and this is the entire thing. There's, if you press next, it goes all the way to the end. Uh, so the way that finales, the way that the font is handling this is that every single slot in the the font set 
is its own suffix. So you can't actually edit these jazz font um, or these jazz chord font uh, suffixes. You know what you get is what you get. There's uh, you know there's nothing more you can do with that. A couple other things to look at here. Let me go back to load library. Um, there is a figured base uh, suffix font here. Um, where is it? There it is. And uh, what this is, let me just show you again. Go in here, go to the chord suffix library. Uh, so what this is is sort of an alternate way to do the figured bass. Uh, I think I showed you in the last category that you could do figured bass with the lyrics tool, which is actually preferable. Um, but in the chords tool, you get sort of these set uh, figures, um, and some of them are stacked on top of each other like this. And um, uh, you know the way to actually use these is um, to to type the chord with the suffix without a root. So let's say let's see this says uh, suffix two thirty, right? So what I would do here is just type um, uh, colon two thirty, and you'll see that the well, of course, I'm showing the fretboards. You would never show the fretboards in this situation, but you'll get the figured base. And obviously, when you do something like this. What you probably want to do is not show fretboards, first of all, but you also want to set the position probably below the staff, and which you can do, of course, by uh, dragging the handle. I'm sort of making a mess of this file, but you can see the, the principle of this is that you would uh, you know, lower the, um, the uh, position of it so that it goes below the staff instead of above. And, of course, you don't want to show the fretboards either. Uh, so that's the figured base uh, suffix library. And then uh, just to sort of show you what some of these look like, I've just sort of loaded up these uh, uh, files with different chord suffixes. And, uh, you know, actually the better way to do this, I should have mentioned, is instead of trying to load the chord suffixes like that, if you really do want to use something else, um, you know, my suggestion is to start with uh, the, the setup wizard, actually, to kind of see what's going on. Because when you use the new document with setup wizard, um, there are some different styles you can choose from, like the engraved style will use the Maestro font and the uh, Times New Roman for the, uh, the suffixes. The handwritten style will use the Broadway copyist font for the music, but it will also use um, the finale copyist for the suffixes. And it also has a different font that it uses for the chord roots, which is sort of the, 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 the major point here which is that if you go into some of these handwritten styles, uh, well, that's the Arial font, so you can sort of see how that looks. That's the, um, you know, the, the root is the Arial, the alterations are Maestro, the suffix is Arial. This is the, the default document. So again, Times New Roman Maestro, Times New Roman for the uh, suffixes. Um, it, when you go into the more handwritten styles, you can see that the not only the suffixes look a little bit more handwritten, but also the, the, cor the chord roots and the alternate bases, right? Um, so what you wouldn't want to do is try and, you know, mix the finale copyist suffix in this case with the Times New Roman uh, chord root because that would just kind of not really match very well. Uh, so this is, anyway, this is the uh, default handwritten style, the Broadway copyist font, and you're using the Broadway al copyist alteration, the finale copyist root, finale copyist suffix font, and uh, this is what the jazz document looks like. You can kind of see what's going on here. You have the, the root is the jazz text, the alterations is the, the jazz music font, and the suffix is the jazz text. All right, so that's what that looks like. Now, it's just sort of interesting to, to be aware of what happens when you try and copy and paste music from like this file, for example. So if I were to try and copy this bar into that original source file I had here, um, <laughs> what you're going to end up with, oops, maybe not in that particular, there we go. Um, what you're going to end up with is this weird situation where the suffixes will copy over with that uh, particular font, but you notice that the chord roots are not. Again, that's because the chord roots are, the font for the chord roots are set in the document options, right? So when I copy it over, I'm not actually changing anything within this document, right? So you can so sort of see the problem here is that once you start copying over suffixes from uh, handwritten fonts into non-handwritten fonts, you're going to get some weird situations like this. Again, it's because the suffix is unique between files, so it literally copies that suffix into the library, so you can see the problem. So this is something I deal with all the time, where I'm constantly having to, you know, uh, delete these suffixes and replace them with the uh, the appropriate suffix. So in this case, I would, you know, press delete here and then find the, the normal 7 flat 9 
Um, it's just sort of just sort of how we do that. All right, and um, I think that covers it. Again, this is, it, it is a little bit of, of a confusing adventure with these libraries and the chord suffixes and everything. So um, hopefully I've taken a little bit of the mystery out of it, but uh, it is a little bit of a complicated uh, situation. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. I think we've maybe got a couple more videos on cooperating with chords, and we'll get to those soon. So thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.